the combination of Toma and Sugita Gunna is simply amazing. This duo rocks and they have a lot of guts. Hello everyone and welcome to the Anime Delia and thank you for joining me as we talk about episode 11 of the A Certain Scientific Railgun T anime series. An episode that was super enjoyable from start to finish despite feeling like a setup episode. With characters appearing to help our heroes in this current predicament and the action starting to unfold. The display from all the characters involved in this episode is what helped make the episode so great in my personal opinion. So in this video we're going to be breaking down what happens and how their interactions with each character in the episode made the episode great. So let's start off by talking about Kuroko Shirai. Her character just displayed why teleportation is so awesome. Just appearing, saving Misaki, sending away the Mitsuka clone plus the bodyguard was pretty cool. I thought it was quite badass the way that she did that. And then of course she dashed out of there out of harm's way with herself and Misaki in tow. Her interactions with Misaki Shokuho though uh, were really funny and kind of cute. I love the expressions on Shirai's face when all of the information is flooding into her head and she's just like, oh, it feels weird, why? I thought that was, yeah, it was just really wholesome in a situation where things seem pretty dire. So yeah, I like that. Seeing though how her memories of Misaka are still gone, but her newest and latest memory flashes up before her, making Shirai feel more happy and more compelled to help, thanks to the display of trust and belief that Misaka showed in Shirai beforehand. The level of trust that was shown and the level of belief that was shown is only one that you would give to a very close friend. Now, to Misaka, Shirai is a lifelong friend who they're very close with, so of course they have that trust, they have that belief from her side and her perspective. But because of the memory altercations and um, eraser or blocking or whatever you want to call it, Shirai doesn't feel that way. To them they're almost strangers. But this is what fuels her desire to help and I love the fact it doesn't stem from Shirai's like lustful mind or ideas. So yeah, I like that. I like the fact that she wants to help just because she's genuinely like trying to befriend Mizuka in a positive light and not in a creepy, comedic, I'm gonna jump on you and harass you type of situation. Plus, it looks like the show is setting up for a Shirai versus Kotoko match somewhere in the next couple of episodes, which that really gets me excited to see because I actually really like both characters and in terms of abilities, teleportation is obviously better than creating a, uh, I don't know, like a puppet of yourself. But yeah, I'd love to see their interactions and how it goes down. So while we're speaking of Kozuko, let's move on to her role in which she played brilliantly. Guiding Mizuka's fragile mind, manipulating her into remembering all the cruel things and the dark side of Academy City has done. Telling her how they treat clones as less than human. Telling her that this is an injustice that should not be allowed. Thus, you should target that building in the far distance. I love the role that Kozuku played, as it adds more of a serious and darker undertone to the series itself. Because what Kozuku was actually saying wasn't incorrect. Like, some of the stuff she was saying was actually right, in a sense. But the one thing I loved about the execution of the way they were manipulating Mitsuka was the amount of emotion and emphasis that Kozuku put into her words. This felt personal to her as a character. So going along the lines of it sounding personal, I want to bring up her motivations as to why she is helping Gensai. Because this isn't outright stated, however, I'm of the belief that she is the friend that used to visit Dolly before Mizuki showed up. Now, obviously her role and her motivation, Kozuku is trying to stop um, or make whoever started the program with Dolly suffer after seeing the amount of abuse that Dolly had to go through with all the scars and all the bodily harm that happened with her character. But saying that, if she is in fact doing that and that is her end goal, 
Surely her memories must have been changed, either thanks to exterior, before Mizuki got a hold of it herself, or simply its manipulation from Gensai's character. Either all sounds possible. After all, we know that Gensai uh, was a part of that project, but he and all the other scientists were wearing those like cancellation uh, mind protector hat things, and obviously with those on there, you can't tell who is underneath. So from Kozuku's point of view, Gensai wasn't a part of that. So he could have easily have said anything to her to kind of say, look, this man who was in that building over there named Alistair, if that is in fact Alistair's building, which I think it might be, is the one who made your friend suffer. That's why your friend ended up the way that she did. Help me, lend me your strength and power, and I will make sure he suffers greatly. Like, maybe that could be the possibility. I know Mitsuka took over exterior herself, so that's not really a possibility as such. More the case that Gensai is just manipulating her and tagging her along. Now, if we go along the lines of this thinking, it makes a bit of sense as to how we could later make it so that Kozuku stops doing what she's doing by stating the fact that Dolly is essentially back by using Misaki's ability and the Misaki clone that Misaki has in her care at this moment in time. After doing this, we can set the record straight, telling Kozuku about Gensai and his involvement behind the project, making her less evil and on the side of good, because she probably just wants her friend back. And with Mitsuki's memory manipulation and changing and her power, she can obviously altercate the Mitsuki clone to act as Dolly and how Dolly used to be and just kind of trim the hair down a little bit. Because at the same time, Dolly was based off of the Mitsuki clone sort of cloning process. And of course, Mitsuki knows some of her memories by just being friends with her. So that's a way I can see them resolving her character. But again, I don't really know without watching the episode. However, I am excited to see how they resolved Kozuku's character. Plus, on a side note, the English voice acting that I watched in this scene of manipulation with Misuka's character was incredible. Both characters played their roles respectively and the character for Kozuku, or the voice actress I should say, made it have an ominous vibe and added that emotion and that personalized impact to the words that were being said. That's why I want to give a shout out to the voice acting in this section, because it was absolutely brilliant in creating more tension, more drama, and an ominous vibe. Now with Mitaki Shogaho, of course I've spoken about how she could be used later on in the end game, but she is going after Gensai and that's fine. But one thing I found really interesting with her character was she seems to understand Imagine Breaker even just a little bit. Because when she's talking to Toma telepathically, she actually states, don't put your right hand on your head now, otherwise my connection would be broken. Which obviously means she has some form of knowledge about Imagine Breaker, which makes a bit of sense considering she dabbled in the darker side of Academy City and um, she has a lot of resources and a lot of connections. I just thought that was quite interesting and I wanted to include it in this video. Guts! Okay, so Sugihita Gunner, this character was mental and so over the top, but I loved every second of it. His moves are ridiculously long and overcomplicated in terms of names, like I don't even want to attempt trying to say them. He deflects a steel beam with his forehead, which is just mental. This man even had Toma blushing by the end of the episode. I already thought he was pretty cool and interesting from the opening of the Daihatsu Sports Festival, you know, with the whole trying to show off and, well not really show off, but like trying to outclass Misaki in a sense. But honestly, this episode just boosted him up into being one of my favorites from the Railgun franchise which admittedly I'm going to hold my hands up and say I forgot to include him when I did my rankings video for the Railgun characters. Oops! Oh well, but after this episode, he's easily at the top of really good or even in the best category. No questions about it, and I'm excited to see more of him as we move forward. 
His interactions with Toma again, just absolutely amazing. Toma's involvement was great. I love the comedic elements he brought to the, his participation within the episode. And yeah, even within an episode that displayed so many characters acting badass and awesome, incredible, Toma, I wouldn't say outclassed these other characters, but he certainly looked incredibly strong and held his own even when fighting Misaka in her current awakened state alongside another level 5. He looked on par with these characters, maybe not, like, you know what I mean. He looked on a similar level despite being a level 0 with only Imagine Breaker going for him. So with Imagine Breaker looking to have a small effect on Misaka at this moment in time, and Misaki now tailing Gensai to a strange location. Shirai is on the hunt for Kozuku. What crazy actions and events, plot twists, await us within episode 12. Only time and spoilers will tell. But in all seriousness, this episode was fantastic from start to finish. They had a lot of build up that looks to have a fantastic payoff as we go into the ending of this story arc. The animation was good, however, like I mentioned, the characters is what made the episodes so much enjoyable and the voice acting was great for every character involved. The expressions were so fun and enticing. So I want to hear your thoughts in the comment section down below. Let me know what you thought of the episode and of course this video as well. If you like this video then make sure you hit that thumbs up button and subscribe for more index related content on a weekly basis. And of course, I'll see you real soon. Have a great day. Aligator, Madane, goodbye.